Associated Press, Alex Jones concedes Sandy Hook attack was 100% real. For years, bombastic far-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones ranted to his millions of followers that the 2012 Sandy Hook elementary school shooting was a hoax, that children weren't killed, and that parents were crisis actors in an elaborate ruse to force gun control. Under oath and facing a jury that could hit him with $150 million in damages for his false claims, Jones said Wednesday he now realises that it was irresponsible and believes that what happened in the deadliest school shooting in American history was 100% real. Jones's public contrition came on the final day of testimony in a two-week defamation lawsuit against him and his Austin-based media company Free Speech Systems, brought by Neil Heslin and Scarlett Lewis, the parents of six-year-old Jesse Lewis. Their son was a first grader who was among the 20 students and six teachers killed at the school in Newtown, Connecticut on December 14th, 2012. I unintentionally took part in things that did hurt these people's feelings, said Jones, who also acknowledged raising conspiracy claims about other mass tragedies from the Oklahoma City bombing and Boston Marathon bombings to the mass shooting in Las Vegas and Parkland, Florida. And I am sorry for that. So clearly a guy who has no problem spreading conspiracy theories about awful tragedies and a lot that actually affect children and this just breaking um a couple minutes ago alex jones to pay damages for the sandy hook hoax claim conspiracy theorist alex jones has been ordered to pay 4.1 million dollars in damages after falsely claiming that sandy hook school shooting in 2012 was a hoax Parents of the victims had been seeking at least 150 million in the defamation trial against the InfoWars host. They said they had endured harassment and emotional distress because of Mr. Jones's misinformation. The jury decided damages on Thursday and must still decide any punitive damages. Mr. Jones had already lost a series of defamation cases brought by parents of the victims by default after failing to produce documents and testimony but this is the first in which damages were determined by a jury. And the silver lining we're gonna get into, ahead of a decision, lawyers for the two parents who brought the suit revealed that Mr. Jones's lawyers had inadvertently sent him two years of text messages from his client's phone. The messages could be of interest to the congressional panel investigating last year's Capitol riot. The committee says Mr. Jones helped organize a rally that took place just before. Mr. Jones also claims he was bankrupt despite evidence that his companies were earning about $800,000 a day. By The Guardian on 2017, where Hadley Freeman interviewed him and his son Noah Posner was killed in the shooting. So just days after when the US was still reeling from the tragedy, and Posner himself was, he says, pretty much in a catatonic state, the theory started spreading. Sandy Hook had never happened. It was staged by actors. The children hadn't existed. It was a ruse by Obama. The hoaxers poured over photos of the family and children on social media and pointed to any visual similarities they could find between the children and living ones. Families were harassed by hoaxers online and off, insisting that they stop their fake grieving. When Posner roused himself from his catatonic grief to post photos of Noah online, hoaxers would leave comments like fake kid. So remember this is back in 2017. The week before our interview, a judge issued a warrant for the arrest of Lucy Richard. She is alleged to have sent messages to Posner, including one that read, death is coming to you real soon and there's nothing you can do about it. That was bad, Posner agrees, but not necessarily the most unsettling. After all, others have put photo of his house on the web and reported him to child protection services. This is the world I deal with now, says Posner. Posner himself used to be into conspiracy theories when he lived in Connecticut. He often had to commit to New York. And how's this for a weird turn of events? And he would listen to right-wing radio hosts such as Alex Jones and Michael Savage on long drives. I'm self-employed, an entrepreneur. I was always looking for more information so I could get the edge on the next guy to get a better idea of the geopolitical perspective. Posner says, once he got used to Jones' raspy voice, he liked him especially. Alex Jones appears to think out of the box. He's entertaining. Arguably more than anyone, Jones is responsible for spreading the conspiracy theories. His radio show and website Infowars.com have an audience of more than 8 million and they specialise in these kind of conspiracies. On the 27th of January 2013, Jones told his audience, in the last month and a half, I have come out and said it was clearly staged. Unfortunately, evidence begins to come out that points more and more in that direction. I wasn't very verbal at that point, but I managed to send Alex Jones an email, says Posner. He wrote, haven't we had our share of pain and suffering? I used to enjoy listening to your shows. Now I feel that your type of show created these hateful people and they need to be reeled in so this guy actually directly messaged alex jones to get him to stop 
Alex Jones' assistant replied, Alex has no doubt this was real, but Jones' thinking seemed to change in 2015. He told his audience it was fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured, and I couldn't believe it at first. I knew they had actors there, clearly, but I thought they had some real kids, and it just shows how bold they are. They clearly use actors. So a more recent interview in 2019 with NPR, and Lenny speaks a bit more on this stuff. They're talking about 2014 again. He says, during the time I was in contact with some of the deniers, I published information about Noah, about his life and about his death. So I published his death certificate. And after doing so, I was accused of publishing a fake one. And that had turned into a larger work titled Nobody Died at Sandy Hook, which was published over 400 pages. So in the book, I was accused of faking this certificate and also lying about other things. So in a lawsuit, I had to show a lot of information about Noah's life prove that he lived i took a dna test and took a sample of noah and a dna test was taken by noah's mother as well to prove that in court that i am noah's father and noah lived and noah died so all that information had to be actually presented in court so before i just talk about that a bit more just one more little thing i want to add on to it um alex jones and jeremy richmond sandy hook dad kills himself as defamation suit continues so one of their parents took their own life after their daughter avial was killed in the massacre what did Alex Jones have to say about this? We have no idea whether he was even murdered at this point. Why would some anti-gun guy do this? This is really sad. My prayers go out to him and his family and we wish for the truth of whatever really happened here to come out. We don't know yet. And we'll see the corporate media say outrageous lies, but it's what they do. And look, the good news of no collusion, the good news that I'm not a Russian agent comes out and now this happens right on time. So he thinks that parent was killed to make him look bad. Thank you.